And now I'd like to uh, welcome Ari Claude Oima, who is the president and general director of the BGFI Group, uh, and uh, which is a well-known uh, bank in Africa, in Gabon, but also in all of uh, Central Africa and West Africa. Welcome, Mr. Oima. Please uh, have a seat. Okay, now we're going to go on to very concrete things here because, uh, after all, as a business person, uh, I believe you began about 30 years ago and uh, in the banking business, and now I believe you have extended your business to the entire area of uh, Central Africa. And um, in terms of the bankerization, um, in terms of uh, your activities, I think that uh, for a bank to become uh, dynamic, I think you've really got to uh, develop all the different activities of a bank. So where are you now in terms of the development of your group? Well, I think we can say that we cannot develop an economy without money. And so money, of course, is what our business is all about. And the bankerization is a, really an obligation today. And so I think that our citizens have to understand that uh, they have to adopt this logic which is to try to uh, maintain and save as much money as possible. And so therefore, um, we try to improve the uh, standard of living of our citizens through this uh, banking activities. And uh, I also think that if you have a very high level of uh, banking activities in, uh, in a country, then of course, uh, we will talk to you about the savings of our group. And I think it has a lot to do with the improvement in their standard of living. And uh, we can talk to you about the increase in the percentage of the people involved in banking activities. And uh, so all of our citizens, they are in the beginning, of course, we're quite afraid of banking activities. And so we have to give them the tools in order to make them or get them to be interested in banks. Uh, and this, of course, we have retail banks uh, for our clientele. We have microfinance available for other uh, citizens. And of course, this allows everyone to find something that is interesting for them in the banking sector. And of course, we also have mobile banking, and we have uh, everything that is uh, SMS. And, and so this allows everyone to have a product that is uh, uh, somehow adapted to his lifestyle. And of course, this is very important for the t mobile telephones. And uh, because uh, in terms of the digitalization, I believe that Africa is even in advance in terms of uh, Europe, because in terms of M payment, uh, you can, uh, uh, it's even experimental in some cities in France, whereas uh, here in Africa, you're already used to uh, paying with your telephone. So I believe that uh, this is something you're really developing in your bank. Uh, yes, in fact, uh, because we have to be uh, harmonized with uh, what's happening in the world today. And of course, uh, the banking networks are not yet quite developed in Africa. And so mobile banking uh, gives us an opportunity to uh, really um, appeal to many different uh, customers. And so it's important for us to develop our clientele and uh, we've seen all the different uh, pre presentations that were made yesterday, is that uh, the rate of, uh, of uh, mobile banking is uh, higher in Africa than anywhere else. And so it's one of those uh, products we really have to develop. Mobile banking is something which is uh, very promising for our group. And of course, SMS is also very important. We have partnerships between the different banks and also the different uh, telephone companies in order to support the, the uh, uh, banking payments uh, directly through the telephone. It's important for us and for our citizens. And uh, Gabon, compared to the other countries in the subregion? Yes, absolutely. It's more advanced here in Gabon than in the other countries of Central Africa because uh, we have real concrete examples right here in Gabon. Uh, and uh, for instance, we have uh, agreements uh, with the different telephone companies. And uh, I mean, Airtel, for instance, we have a good uh, agreement and cooperation with them that would allow us to have uh, a good penetration rate throughout the uh, entire population. And of course, uh, the uh, bankerization uh, should be an obligation. I think it is not normal today to have uh, citizens that are simply carrying cash around in their pockets, even if it's only for the problem of security. And so I think that uh, for that reason, I think that uh, it is something which is uh, very important of uh, having this uh, uh, different credit cards and also the banking uh, on activities on the telephone. Yes, and it's also interesting for your group. Uh, so um, your group is very special uh, it's because it is not just in one country, but it's in about 10 different countries right now. In the two different Congos, I believe, uh, you are located also in Central Africa, in West Africa, in the Ivory Coast, uh, and in other countries. 
I'd like to ask you a question. So how can you uh, carry out business and develop these businesses in so many different countries? Because uh, fragmentation is quite a problem. And so how do you succeed in setting up in different countries like this? Well, yesterday we listened to some of the uh, presentations concerning the the uh, presidents and the former presidents who said that uh, that the future of Africa would be dealing with the integration of the countries. And so, in fact, we were talking about this problem of integration, and we decided that the best way to have uh, regional integration would be to have economic integration and then to allow the political integration follow through afterwards. And our example, of course, is that um, we have uh, we are located in countries. In Cameroon, just as an example, and uh, we always say that when a Gabonese person goes to Cameroon, he has some difficult problems, uh, even culturally or politically. And I can say that uh, um, we have less problems setting up our bank in, uh, in Cameroon than even some individuals. So uh, the governments have helped us, and they have uh, accompanied us in order to be able to set up our bank. And I think that after us is going to be the different companies who are going to be able to set up their business connections through the, the fact that the bank exists in both countries. And we don't have any problem of uh, a class. It's if you have succeeded in business and your business is successful, then of course you are going to be considered differently. Whereas in the political world, it's quite different. And so for us, integration first has to take place at an economic level. Uh, we are in 10 different countries. We've developed different projects uh, within our group, which is called uh, Excellence uh, 2020. And we hope uh, to be in uh, even more countries by the year 2020. Uh, we've covered Central Africa. I think there are just a couple of countries uh, left. And then, of course, we will be uh, getting into other countries after that. And uh, you also have uh, monetary integration, because right now some of the uh, people in France are debating the very existence of the euro. And, of course, uh, your CFA franc is tied to the euro. Is there a possibility of extending uh, the CFA franc? Or is the, the value of the CFA franc too high right now today? Well, what do you mean, too uh, high compared to what? Because after all, uh, we have uh, good, strong money today, and uh, this currency uh, covers the uh, different uh, needs of the the uh, franc zone, uh, and of course, uh, and of course, it covers all of our economic needs in this zone. So I think that maybe the most important problem is to be sure that uh, the Africans which are in this zone uh, should invest in this zone and, uh, and not look towards investing in other zone and, or imagining that some kind of an inflation is going to take place. Because if you uh, uh, talk uh, about different uh, operations in yen or in dollars, Nobody's worrying about it. So why do we keep talking about uh, CFA francs? We always have to think uh, that somehow there's going to be some kind of a, a, a problem of uh, the um, value of the money going down. In my mind, the problem of the currency is not a real problem. I think it's much more important to say that do we have confidence in our own economies, and I think we do have confidence. And I think uh, do our governments have confidence in our countries and in the business people in our countries. I think if they have confidence, then we don't have a problem. Well, you said you wanted to uh, build uh, a huge uh, regional bank, uh, for instance, uh, that would go from Rwanda to Dakar. And uh, you said that you would do this? Yes. Well, we're talking about a regional bank. We simply want to have an African group. And uh, of course, of the entire African continent. And, uh, of course, we started our activities in Gabon, but we're already located in several countries, and we just have one bank. But now we have a, we're a financial group, and we have uh, four different trades. And, of course, uh, a f basic activity was banking. But now, today, we're more than bankers because we're specialized in different types of financing. We have uh, credit leases, uh, and uh, these are needs that are being expressed by our business operators. And uh, when you have a small company that's investing, they don't have enough uh, finances, we accompany them uh, with all sorts of uh, credit uh, uh, leases and uh, financing. And uh, we also have consumption uh, loans. And uh, when you have a small company that has uh, problems being paid by a big company, we have something called uh, uh, billing, factor building and factoring. And so 
uh, we are becoming an investment bank and a business bank. And when you have a young person who would like to begin in business, and uh, can we have uh, this uh, uh, individual banking and also microfinance. So what we'd like to do is to form a big group, which is not just uh, one activity, but is going to go over all the different needs of our citizens and uh, so that we would be a financial partner of all of these different interest groups. We want to be an African group uh, with the competency and the quality of service of all of the different uh, major groups in the world. So this is our label today and our aspirations. And are things are working well? Yes. I would say that things are, uh, we just had our last uh, General Assembly meeting and in 2013 we had a, a six billion dollars in our balance sheet of a uh, net uh, profits of $60 million. So when you have 10% uh, uh, as pure profits in terms of the overall uh, turnover, I think that you're doing quite well. And uh, of course we have to, to see what is the fourth, the strength of the group. Uh, and uh, I think that we have, uh, uh, for instance, a 19% growth. So I think that we're doing quite well. And we have a very high profitability rate, uh, uh, which is about 20% uh, uh, in um, many of our activities. So I think we have to continue in this direction so that here in Africa, we can become a champion and uh, who believes in Africa, in the future of Africa. Uh, well, I guess our time is over already, but uh, uh, you're sort of a self-made man and uh, you've been able to build a group uh, based on nothing, really, uh, because you uh, bought up a bank a long time ago and you are building a group today. Uh, do you think that uh, the business people and community are given a sufficient value? Because after all, you do have artists, uh, sports people, and so on, who are given certain importance. And what about the business community? Well, I would say that the different uh, business people, they have to give themselves value. I don't think it's the bank that's going to give them value. Of course, we give them a lot of value. And uh, after all, I am the person uh, who is here to service them. But uh, given the fact that, uh, that uh, there are several of them that are succeeding, then of course, I think everything else is just simply automatic. I don't think that we have to wait for someone to help us. I think everybody's got to look into their own uh, possibilities well. Thank you very much uh, for your contributions. <laughs> I am Africa.